agronomic practices of growing organic barley for food, feed, and malt. Before talking about field activities, it is important to know the climatic requirements of the crop. Therefore, we will briefly talk about it. Barley crop requires cool weather between 12 to 15 degrees Celsius during early growth stages and warm and dry conditions about 30 degrees Celsius at maturity. It grows well in the temperate and subtropical regions. The water requirement of the barley crop is generally lower than the wheat crop. It is commonly grown under rain-fed or drought-prone areas. It cannot tolerate frost at any stage of the growth. Soil requirements Barley performs better in sandy to moderately heavy loom soils with neutral to mixed saline reaction. Medium fertility soil are most suited for barley production. However, it may be grown on a variety of soil types owing to its high adaptability characteristics. Acid soils are not suitable. Cultural methods are similar to those of wheat and oats. We will briefly look at field preparation, seed and sowing, nutrient management, water management, weed management and other pests. Field preparation. Barley performs well in well prepared light textured seed bed. Generally two to three plowings followed by planking after every plow is recommended. However, care should be taken to conserve soil moisture in the rain-fed areas. Plowing should be done in the evening and planking in the early mornings to conserve soil moisture. Planking pulverizes the soil and also helps in preserving soil moisture. In saline soils, field should be left undisturbed for about a week before sowing. This results in the upward movement of the soluble salts from root zone thereby ensuring quick germination of the seeds and better performance of the plant. Seed and Sowing Under rain-fed and saline conditions, soak the seeds in water overnight at room temperature. This allows uniform and faster germination of the seeds. Under irrigated normal conditions, soaking may not be required. Time of Sowing Timely sowing ensures good return both in terms of quality and yield. Under rain-fed areas, sowing should be adjusted with soil moisture content and weather conditions. However, the sowing time differs in accordance with agroclimatic zones. Seed rate and spacing. Seed rate depends on many factors such as seed test weight, spacing, sowing time, method of sowing, fertility status of the soil, and agro conditions. Generally, a seed rate under medium fertility soil is 90 to 100 kg per hectare and 120 kg per hectare in poor soils. Seed rate. Under irrigated areas in normal sowing, about 75 kg per hectare is recommended and in late sown cases, 100 kg of seed is required per hectare. Under rain-fed areas, 80 to 100 kg of seed per hectare is required or recommended. Under saline conditions, 100 kg of seed is recommended per hectare. Seed spacing between the rows. Under irrigated condition, 23 cm is recommended between the rows and under rain-fed condition, 23 to 25 cm is recommended. Maintaining adequate spacing between the rows will allow better performance of the crops or utilization of the resources. It will also ease the intercultural operations. Seed depth. Under irrigated condition, 4 to 5 cm placement into the soil is recommended and under rain-fed condition, 6 to 8 cm is recommended so that the seeds do not get desiccated under heat and are also able to utilize the soil moisture. Method of sowing. The seeds can be sown in line in shallow forests or broadcasted or be drilled into the soil. Nutrient Management High soil fertility results in lodging. Normally, barley is grown on residual soil fertility of the previous crop. 
In irrigated areas, 10 to 15 tons of compost or FYM is recommended. The soil organic matter helps in improving the water holding capacity of the soil. This is especially important in dry land conditions. The recommended rate for phosphorus and potassium remains same for both rain fed as well as irrigated conditions, that is 20 kg per hectare each. However, 20 to 40 kg of seeds per hectare is recommended under rain fed conditions for nitrogen and 40 to 60 kg per hectare under irrigated conditions. Nitrogen deficiency Barley is sensitive to nitrogen deficiency. Plants are stunted with thin stem and pale green leaves as shown in the image. In acute conditions, young tillers fail to develop heads and may die prematurely. If the deficiency persists and become more severe, chlorosis advances from the tip to the base of the leaf. Chlorotic leaves turn pale brown and die, forming a thatch around the base of the plant. Phosphorus deficiency Barley is sensitive to phosphorus deficiency as well. It adversely affects the absorption of nitrate or nitrogen. Plants appear stunted and stout with dark green leaves. Its deficiency delays maturity and yield is severely reduced due to inadequate root development. The symptoms on the leaves appear as purple color on the tips of the leaves. The stem and the leaf sheets of the lower leaves also become purple red in color. Potassium deficiency. Plants have stunted growth. In severe cases, plants die immaturely. Symptoms start as marginal chlorosis and necrosis on the older leaves. In severe cases, affected leaves burn and die. Then deficiency symptoms move on upper leaves. Integrated Nutrient Management Analyze soil before sowing to measure the amount of available nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Apply analysis-based recommended quantity of NPK. Apply full dose of phosphorus and potassium and half dose of nitrogen as basal application. Top dress with other half of nitrogen dose. These nutrients can be supplied through organic manures and biofertilizers. Incorporate legume crops in rotation for nitrogen. Water management. Barley crop has high tolerance to drought, therefore requires less water. As stated earlier, generally requires two to three irrigations under irrigated system. However, irrigation frequency depends upon winter rains, soil types, and the variety. Critical growth stages for irrigation are during seedling or sprouting stage, which requires sufficient moisture at the time of sowing. Active tillering stage, that is about 30 to 35 days after sowing. Flag leaf stage, milky or soft dough or grain filling stages. Of these stages, active tillering and grain filling stages are most critical. That is about 30 to 35 days and 60 to 65 days after sowing respectively. Water logging or heavy irrigation should be avoided as they tend to lodge the plant. Weed management. Weeds can cause serious yield losses in barley. Controlling weeds is essential to attain optimum yield. Weeds compete with barley for light, nutrients and moisture. Barley yields are reduced when one or more of these factors is limiting. Reduction in yield is proportional to the weed population in the field. It has been reported that weed competition can reduce yield by 15 to 20 percent. Generally, it is a problem in irrigated fields. Major weeds of barley include Chinopodium album, Sertium ervensi, Anagallis ervensis, Millilotus alba, and Millilotus indica, and Avena fatua. The cost of weed management should be equal or lower than the benefits, both in the current as well as in the future years. Preventive measures of weed. Using weed-free seed, tools, and equipment, 
practicing physical control measures such as direct seeding to leave weed seeds on the surface, thereby desiccating them. Cultural methods such as crop rotation with forage crops or fall seeded cereals to disrupt the life cycle of the weeds. Other practices include increasing seeding rates and early seeding to increase crop competition with weeds. Insect pest Soil insects such as white ants, gujia vivil, cutworm and termites are commonly found. Forage pests such as aphids feed on barley plant. In addition, they also act as a vector for barley yellow dwarf virus disease. Rodents such as field rats are also a problem in the standing field. Harvesting Barley should be harvested 10 to 15 days after the physiological maturity of the crop has been attained. If this duration is exceeded, crop will get too dry and then cause shattering at harvest. Barley physiologically matures when kernel moisture content drops to about 40%. Barley can be harvested after reaching about 35% kernel moisture, but the grain cannot be safely stored until the moisture content is decreased to 14% by drying. Barley can be harvested when the stems become dry enough to be broken by hand easily in semi-arid and arid regions. And in humid regions, seed moisture and hardiness should be checked using teeth, fingernails or using moisture meter. Delayed harvesting after the seeds have dried followed by a rainfall may lead to discoloration of the grains. Delayed harvesting also leads to yield losses. It has been reported that yield loss of barley increased from 3.5% to 9.5% as a result of delayed harvesting date. When barley crop is grown as a feed, it can be harvested as a mature grain and milled or harvested immature as green chop and made into haylage. Depending on social economic situations such as plot size and altitude and slope, different harvesting methods can be adopted. Machines such as Mini Reaper, which is also used for paddy harvesting, can also be used for barley. It can also be manually harvested using sickle or just by hand pulling, where feasible combination of the two can be used. Drying the crop harvested with hand tools are made into bunches and left in the fields to dry. Then they are taken for threshing. Threshed crop is left in open and sunny place for drying to bring the moisture content down to 12 to 14 percent. It is aerated by inverting the heap with shovel and covered with the material during the night. Threshing. Threshing is done manually with a hand tool, especially in the developing countries. This hand tool can be made of two sticks joined by a knob, one for the handle and the other which swirls in a clockwise direction, threshing the crop. Barley must have its fibrous outer hull removed before it can be eaten. Barley grains with their hulls still on are called covered barley or hulled barley. Once the grain has had the inedible hull removed, it is called dehulled barley. Dehulled barley is considered a whole grain and is a popular health food. Pearl barley or pearled barley is hulled barley which has been processed further to remove the bran. It may be polished through a process known as pearling. Dehulled or pearl barley may be processed into a variety of barley products. Malting Malt is a germinated cereal grain that has been dried in a process known as malting. Some of the desirable qualities of the grain for malting are They should be plump, mellow or soft, small kernel with tight hull. They should be of same type and starchy with high germinative capacity or percentage that is equal to or greater than 95%. The protein content should be lower, equal to or lower than 125 gram per kg of seed on a dry weight basis. The grains should be minimally skinned and broken kernels should be less than 5%. Healthy and clean grains should be used. Mellow kernels should be 70% or more and not semi-steely. There should not be signs of pre-harvest sprouting. Six-row barley with white aileron layer is acceptable. Some of the undesirable qualities are broken kernels, flinty or glassy kernels, skinned or peeled grains, musty or stale grains, and infected. Tillage system for growing malting barley. A shift from conventional to reduced or no tillage system are being practiced. 
The effects of tillage on barley grain yield has been found to be variable. Tillage was found to influence malting grain quality. For example, protein concentration in conventional tillage system has been found to be higher with 131 gram per kilogram of grains, whereas in reduced tillage, the protein concentration was lower with 121 gram per kilogram of grains. The most suitable protein concentration was found to be under no tillage system with 113 gram per kilogram of grains. Malting is done to produce or activate enzymes such as alpha and beta amylase. They help in hydrolyzing starch into sugar which promotes or initiates germination and also convert protein into soluble compound. It also helps in developing aroma and flavor. Malting process Soaking or steeping of cleaned and sized grains in water with occasional draining to bring up the moisture content of the grains to 44 to 46 percent. Then they are led to germinate at 20 degrees Celsius in drums or tanks. When the sprout or echo spire attains a length of 75 to 100 percent of the kernel length, germination is stopped by clean drying or roasting to 4 to 5 percent moisture content. Malt is then cleaned and dried for brewing.